What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and I had to make sure as many people as possible see this very special clip from my interview with Yo. That's why I just am recording from my phone. I made a last minute edit, and this is really covering something that's so important when it comes to making impact versus just getting these random numbers. And, and when you hear this conversation, it'll put so many things in perspective. I hope it helps a lot of you artists focus on what's actually going to matter in terms of building a considerable fan base and making legitimate impact. Here's a clip. I'll hit you up and be like, bro, I read this saying it changed my day or it inspired me to write this or, you know what I'm saying, it motivated me to, to listen to that artist. You know, sometimes that's like, I know social media is so big in numbers and analytics and everything, but all you need is one listener to okay. to really change one viewer or one reader to potentially start that chain reaction. You know, that one person can take you somewhere. You have no clue that's going to happen just because, you know, they know somebody and they share with them, they share with somebody. The next thing you know, you at the interesting office because three people shared a song. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to take four million views. That's wonderful, right? If you're getting paid for it, but a lot of times we be looking at these numbers and you are looking like damn, no one's listening. And the thing that you want, like you want to get to that next level, sometimes you can get there just because two or three people are paying attention. That's one hundred percent. That's one hundred percent. Like, yeah, the right person. Someone might have a platform. They might decide to. A dude told me the other day he has yeah. um, some random big meme page decided to use him in some montage and like he had no relation to him they somehow came across it and then that even, other meme pages took that meme and like it just started spiraling for him and he had nothing to do with the situation like that's all you need and you don't and you don't get that without putting it out like presenting it you know i'm 100 percent believe you want to get everything as fine as soon as possible and to make sure that you feel as good about the content you're making before it's out in the world. But there's going to be some things that you'll never be able to get them perfect, but they'll be perfect for somebody. You know, mm -hmm. someone else is going to see that perfection. And them seeing that perfection, you just never know what that can do, not just for them, but even for you. And the same token, it can take you somewhere you never imagined just by hitting it out, just by having it in the world. You know, even the songs you put out don't have no views for the first year. And next thing you know, somebody has Spotify put on a playlist. Yeah. And now, now you up, you up, up, and you didn't see that coming because you were you were so worried about that first day, that first week. That's why it's so crazy. You talk about first week sales, man. We should talk about end of year sales. Like how many albums did you sell the year? Yeah. I mean, that what matters. Like we can't afford. People miss things every day. So the fact that we tend to focus so much on first week sales is silly. When it's just like, how how was your year? You put out an album, that's incredible. So how did you able to work that thing throughout the entire year instead of trying to make sure you got that number one for what seven days? Mm -hmm. I mean that's cool, but like you want to be number one at the end of the year? You want to turn the calendar every number one because you can't. Like you can get those numbers up every week, and by the end of the year you have accumulated more sales than everybody else. If you work something like that. But man, we be so focused on the momentary. We only see there's like a bigger picture. Yeah, it's, it's weird. It's like trying to go for the trophy as opposed for going for the win. Facts. Like a, what? A twisted way like to think. <laughs> yeah. People want to go to the the championship but not play regular season. Yeah, well, you gotta play the regular season. You gotta go to the playoffs. You gotta get like you gotta go through all of that. You just don't go to the ship. You yeah. just don't go to the award ceremony. Yeah. Right? No, it's a whole process of getting there, which to me, you'll understand the reward with that on the way. But if you just want to jump there and get the trophy, man, you don't even fathom what you missed out on. And that's usually the best part. Yeah, well, yeah, because you can't even appreciate it the same. And it's funny you talk about those, like, uh, man, because when you think about instant hit, I mean, of course, like there's been a lot of records that still keep keep moving, but there's been so many things that have been impactful that, like in hindsight, you find like finding out they didn't even do what you would have thought they did when they came out. Like I was watching, um, I don't know if you saw Robert Townsend's Breakfast Club interview, but he talked about Five Heartbeats was a flop when it came out, and that's like a cult classic in like in black community. So many people know 
that movie. It comes on BET all the time. But when it came out, it was a complete flop. It was like no money, like nothing like that. But then just accumulated over time, it, it made it, the money. Like I think he, he put in like three hundred k or hundred k, whatever. And now it made like t- it made like ten mil over time, something like that. But that, that, that long game, and it changes. <laughs> it changes. I was. I got a piece coming out tomorrow. I wrote about Outcast, Get Up, Get Out. And okay. I didn't realize it was a radio single. It was like the third single of Southern Playlistic. And it's like, wow, that was a single. There's no way that did well. That's not, it, it doesn't <laughs> translate to yeah. like, yeah. That's not his ball, you know. That's not Rosa Parks. This is, it's like it's a really dope record, but that's not going to work for radio. So let's say they look at that song and be like, dang, but like it didn't do well on radio, didn't chart. But the cultural relevance of that, get out, get up, get something like that, transcends the the radio. That transcends the time period. Like mm-hmm. that's a, that's not just a staple. That's a, a phrase people say to themselves to get up in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes you yeah. can sometimes you can hit the jackpot and hit something commercial and it's huge and it's big, it's wonderful. You get all the trophies, but sometimes you gotta appreciate when you you're, you're generational. You know when you transcend that pocket of time and you live on in something that's far longer and maybe not as, like economically as rewarding in the moment, but like to have somebody talk about something you did for 20 years, bro, like that means that's gonna live on for a long time. And that's mm-hmm. not an easy thing to do, but when you get it right, it's, an, it's an incredible. Once again, that's a clip from my interview with Yo Phillips from DJ Booth, senior writer at DJ Booth. And there's so much more coming. The full interview will be dropping soon. Stay tuned for that. I'm going to put that in the uh, description below once that interview drops. If the link isn't active before then, that means the interview has not dropped yet. Other than that, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.